Welcome to your weekly UAS News Update. We have five stories for you this week, and uh, this is gonna be a long one, so make sure that you're nice and comfortable and you have your uh, favorite drink. The uh, new uh, Drone Alliance was announced, and we're part of it, and I wanna talk about this. We have a new FAA Administrator nomination. We also have a new PHAC, the Pilot Handbook of Aeronautical Knowledge. And then the FAA has been messing up certificates. We'll talk about that. And then lastly, we have a DJI update regarding Remote ID, and then also the Air 3. So get to it. Your first story this week is the DAA, which is the Drone Advocacy Alliance, and we have joined the alliance to make sure that your voice are heard when lawmakers are developing new policies for drones, especially when those policies threaten the safety of the public safety agencies. Uh, this comes after a proposed DJI ban that was eventually shut down, but uh, there may be more in the future. So uh, the mission of the DAA is to work with industry stakeholders and also legislators uh, to create an open and safe and an honest U.S. Uh, drone market, especially when it comes to uh, drones from different origin. Uh, so we want to make sure that you can pick the right tool for your operational needs. So we're happy to join others in this, um, such as the Drone Service Provider Alliance, uh, Drone Sense, Drone Link, the Uncrewed Trade Alliance, and then Blue Nose uh, Aerial Imaging, and then also DJI uh, in this uh, entire line. So if you're interested in learning more, make sure that you visit droneadvocacyalliance.com. We'll put a link down in the description as well. Your second story this week is a possible FAA Administrator nomination, yay! The former Deputy Administrator, his name is Mike Whitaker, is expected to be nominated by the President to become the next FAA Administrator. Uh, according to the Wall Street Journal, the nomination will likely come next week. Uh, Whitaker has worked with the FAA under the uh, former FAA Administrator, his name was Michael Huerta, uh, from 2013 to 2016. Uh, he's worked at United Airlines, ensuring regulatory compliance, and then he currently works at a company called Supernol, which is a uh, eVTOL subsidiary of Hyundai, and uh, he also does regulatory compliance over there. So we'll keep you posted if we hear anything else, but uh, hopefully we get somebody in charge of the FAA pretty soon. And for your third story this week, we have the FAA yet again. Uh, now, this case, they are releasing a new pilot handbook of aeronautical knowledge, or the PHAC for short. Uh, this is the fourth version of the document since it was created in 2003. Uh, at this time, I've gone through all of the 522 pages of the new document. Uh, I've compared it to the 2016 version, and I'm actually quite underwhelmed with the new release. Now, historically, a new version of the PHAC involves new graphics, new chapters, new explanation, new everything pretty much. Uh, sadly, none of this for this version. Uh, I found that there is only a small addition in chapter 14, uh, very few uh, uh, words about airport clearing, scanning, traffic avoidance, and sea and avoid, which are important topics, don't get me wrong, but uh, I don't think it warranted a brand new version of the entire PHAC. Uh, the new guidance talks about ADSB and then uh, understanding and knowing the limitation of ADSB, uh, understanding the physical limitations of the human eye and then knowing uh, the aircraft blind spots. Again, not really new concepts, just uh, a, a way to add it into the, uh, the knowledge. Now, I suggest that everyone reads that specific page. It's only one page, really, uh, of new material, and uh, because it will actually help drone pilots understanding what aircraft will do prior to maneuvering, and then also talking about ADSB uh, in there. So, uh, I was actually surprised also that there were no mention of the old uh, retired advisory circular for weather. Uh, they were replaced with a brand new advisory circular, but the document, brand new 2023 PHAC, still mentions the old advisory circular. And then also, I think a big oversight, uh, the FAA did not change the uh, NODEM's new label as notice to uh, air mission. They still mention notice to airmen, uh, despite the change that happened officially in December of 2021. So I'm not sure what's going on right here, but on page four, if you look of, uh, at the beginning of the new PHAC, it mentions this revision is considered a minor revision, I would say so. Uh, a major revision is underway and is planned for release in June of 2024. So um, I know you're going to ask if you've bought the old one uh, on paper, can you still use it? Absolutely. In this case, I usually uh, like to tell people use the newest version that you can, but in this case, uh, it's not worth sending it back to Amazon or, or, or getting the new version, quite frankly. Just use the old version for now. And then uh, if you need to buy a new one, I would probably buy the June 2024 if it is actually a major revision. So. 
All right, your next story this week is a snafu at the FA Airman Certification Branch. I know we're talking a lot about the FA this week, but uh, well, they're in the news, so let's talk about it. Uh, the FA office is in charge of the pilot certificates and they have been sending the wrong certificate to people. Uh, I've never heard of this happening actually before, but uh, after getting several uh, messages from students in our system saying, I got the wrong card, what do I do? Uh, we decided to uh, kind of, uh, well, research and then found out that the agency has acknowledged the issue. Uh, if this has happened to you, make sure that you visit the Airman Certification Branch website. I'm going to put a link down in the description right here. And then you can order a new one. And then also they're going to send you an extended temporary certificate. So uh, we emailed back and forth several times uh, with a list of names uh, from our own students to make sure that this could be expedited. And it looks like they've been uh, taking care of it. All right, finally, we have an update on two DJI drones. Uh, one is a new drone and one is an old drone with a weird story. But let's talk about the, f the first one. Um, we finally have specs for the uh, leaked Air 3, which is supposed to come out eventually. We don't have a, a final date at the moment, but uh, it looks like it's going to have a 1 over 1.3 CMOS sensor on both of the lenses. Uh, it's got a 10-bit uh, D-Log HLG. It has DJI 04 transmission, so the OQ-Sync 4, which is a, a new system. Uh, a 3X telephoto lens along with the 1X. We also have 4K at 60 frames per second on both of the cameras, 48 megapixel cameras on both of them, and then a wide camera uh, that has a f1.7 and then telephoto has f2.8. Uh, flight time looks like it's going to be 46 minutes of flight time. Phew! That was a lot of information and we can not wait to get our hands on one and uh, hopefully fly it very soon. So uh, next up, we have the Mavic Pro Platinum. I know this is an old piece of gear, the Mavic Pro Platinum, but um, it was supposedly Remote ID compliant and that got everybody very confused, including myself. Why would DJI approve such an old drone, old relative, right? when they didn't approve some drones in between the remote uh, the, the Pro Platinum and then the newer models. Uh, it was supposed to be Remote ID compliant, but today, the, as we're recording this, the, the, the DOC um, list, the FAA has said that they are rescinding the approval and DJI is telling the FAA that the aircraft is actually not Part 89 compliant. Part 89 is where Remote ID lives. Uh, in addition, the person that was listed as the point of contact from DJI said that they actually never submitted the DOC submission to the FAA. Now, let's look at this timeline, okay? On January 19th, the FAA accepts uh, a DOC, a Declaration of Compliance, application from DJI to uh, what's called RID 0000111, okay? And that's the Mavic Pro Platinum, all right? On February 16th, less than a month later, the FAA received communication from DJI stating that uh, that drone is actually not compliant. So all everything that was in that DOC is not compliant with part 89. Uh, and so DJI is asking for that uh, approval to be uh, uh, rescinded. And so DJI, does an internal review of the incident and they determined that the employee listed on the application no longer had remote ID certification responsibility at the time that the uh, paperwork was submitted. And then they said that the employee did not submit that declaration of compliance. So fast forward from, from, from February all the way to July 12th, uh, which is this week, the uh, DOC, the Declaration of Compliance, has been publicly rescinded by the FAA. Now, the FAA said that they're continuing to investigate this incident, and uh, which seems to us like something really fishy happened. So let us know what you think happened in the comments, and then we'll let you know if we hear more about this issue. But at the moment, if you have a Mavic 3 Platinum, guess what? It is not Remote ID compliant anymore. So, all right. Thanks for sticking around. Be sure to check out the uh, live Q&A that we have on Monday. And uh, uh, if you have any drone related questions, we're gonna try to answer all of those. And then if not, I'll see you next week. Why can't I say this word? Advo advo advocacy. Advo avocado. Yeah, no, avocado. Advocacy. DJ Avocado. Advocacy. Advocacy, <laughs> I can't say it. Avocadabra. Advocadabra. <laughs>